Oh, hello, hello. Happy Friday Eve. Welcome to the Faith, Focus, and Finish Strong Zoom Talk. I am your host and founder, Marcia Cole. We are a community of women who believe in sisterhood, motivation, and prayer. We have created this space for you to be able to come on and take your mask off, for you to be able to hear other stories from other women so you know that you are not alone and whatever you're going through, you can make it through. And most importantly, to help you see the beauty on, in the path that God has you on despite the challenges that you face. Ladies, ladies, let's welcome our special guest tonight, Tiara J. Y'all go ahead and welcome her. Come on, Faith Focus and Finish Strong community. Let's welcome her. Let's welcome her. Woo -woo. Welcome, Tiara. Good evening, ladies. Thanks for having me, Marcia. And I'm, I'm just excited to be here. So thank you all. Okay, ladies. So Tiara may be new to some of you all, but she's not all the way new to the Zoom talk. She was one of the lovely powerhouse speakers at our um, conference um, last, th this at the beginning of this month, the Living Free Conference. And so now she's coming on the weekly Zoom talk to bless you all. Tonight, we will be talking about coming out of the storm. Okay, ladies, you know how we do this. We are gonna jump into a discussion. After the discussion, we will open it up for Q&A. If you have any questions, if you just wanna pour it back into the speaker, share your own testimony about coming out of the storm, please, please, please. But while we're having this discussion, please don't be quiet. We need to light that chat up. Let her know that she is speaking to you. All right, Tiara, introduce yourself to the audience. Well, hello again. My name is Tiara J, and I'm so happy to be here. Like Marcia said, I am a motivational speaker. I'm really a, um, a serial entrepreneur. I do so many things. I wear so many hats, literally and figuratively. Um, I have been in the motivational speaking um atmosphere for about I would like to say since 2013 so it's been a little over nine years I'm just happy to be here so excited and I can't wait to dive in um with you ladies um yeah I'm excited to be here so let's go ahead and dive in but before we dive in ladies if you have not shared tonight's Zoom talk with anyone. Remember, we're not selfish here. Go ahead and send those last minute text messages. Go ahead and send those DMs on Instagram and on Facebook. Don't allow anyone to miss what the Holy Spirit has to say tonight through Miss Tierra J. So Tierra, tell us, tell us about your personal testimony about coming out of the storm. Yes, for me, um, coming out of the storm is kind of still really new because I didn't know I was even in a storm um, when I was in one. Uh, a little about me, I have, again, I am an entrepreneur. Um, I'm a mom to one amazing, beautiful daughter. And I will say that I started to become in a storm or a test really um, in 2019. Um, it was tough for me um, at that time being a single mom and trying to get back out there in the dating world. It is not easy. Um, it's very challenging, especially when you're a Christian woman and you walk um, that Christian walk. It's very hard to allow someone new into your space and into your life and for me every other area in my life magnificent amazing this personal love life stuff raggedy child I mean it was like oh my gosh am I ever going to get it right like what am I doing am I doing something wrong is it me you know so I had all these thoughts in my mind and, you know, when you are being tested by the devil, he never shows you his horns. He always comes really nice and packaged the way you want him to look. 
Um, and for me, he came in the form of a man that I thought was going to be my husband. Um, back in 20, uh, we started talking 2018, tried to make it official 2019. And I, I just noticed um, a lot of things in my life um, being railroaded. I just felt like the blessings um, started to be at a halt. Um, I felt like I was on a hamster wheel and I was going through the same things over and over and over. And I couldn't believe that the very, my enemy was someone that I thought loved me. I couldn't believe that this person that claimed they loved me and prayed for me because this person was um, in school to be um, a deacon. You know, um, when I heard that he was in church and he loved God, I was like, oh, okay, okay. You know, you, 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 you dress how I like, you talk how I like, um, you have, um, and you're on the educated level, you know, you have your degrees, um, you work here, you do this and you love God. Like, oh yes. Okay. I think I won. Let's do this. You know, because I had been praying. I said, you know what, God, I'm going to step out of myself. I don't, I don't want to work in my own will anymore. You know, I'm going to allow you to work it within me and through me and whatever you, you have for me, God, that, you know, I'm just going to rock with you. I'm going to rock out with you. So um, it's just, you know, 2019 and 2020, it, you know, it was a lot. And I learned so much about what I didn't want, you know, and um, I didn't know that this person wasn't for me until, you know, after the pandemic. And I said, you know, I'm hearing all these nice stories about, um, couples getting married during the pandemic because you're in this same capacity and space together, you know, so um, what's going on with us, you know, I, you know my walk and you know my stance on certain things and it was always the excuse of, um, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure things out. We're going to take this day by day and I think for both of us, the pandemic showed us all of the other things that we hid under the rug, um, mostly our whole life. When you are someone like for me, I'm, I was always in the rat race of life. I do a million, trillion, gazillion things all of the time. I'm always just doing something like I can't stop. Like I'm, I'm just like, I have to do this. I have to do this. So when the world like literally stopped, um, um, in 2020, I was like, it was like a, a halt. And I had to deal with these things that I've swept under the rug and didn't want to talk about um, for so long. So I dealt with, I didn't know that he was sent to teach me a lesson. And that lesson was to no longer require love from a man in the form of me wanting the love from my father from years ago. Um, my mom and dad, of course, they met back in the eighties. Um, they were together when I was born and, you know, my mom got tired of, you know, the everyday day, day-to-day -day stuff. And, you know, she left. And at the time my father couldn't see past being a dad. So he was like, oh, okay. If you're not going to be with me, then I'm not going to be in her life. And it was, that was a lot for me trying to figure out, you know, why he's not in my life. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, what is it about me? So when I started dating um, in my later teenage years, early twenties, it was like, are you the love that I'm looking for from my dad? Can you come and feel, I, did, I didn't say this. Um, of course, I didn't say this out loud, but that's what I was yearning for inside of my heart. I was trying to fill a space and a void that I thought, a man, a, a man could feel. But as I got, you know, older and grew my faith walk and I started, you know, really prophesizing over my life and really get into the word, I, I, I realized that that wasn't for me. But, you know, again, sometimes our flesh is weak and I allowed this person in my space and when he came in my space, you know, I, I didn't see the red flags at first. To me, I turned from pink. 
I always say I turn I, some, with that person, I turn my red flags pink for him. Because when you say you are in, when you say you are a man of God and a man of faith, it, I, can't, I let my guard down. And I didn't, I no longer look to God for this person because I thought he was the spokesperson. I thought he was the person. I thought he was an answered prayer. And he was nothing more than a test. He was nothing more than something I was supposed to overcome. And um, 2021 came and, you know, it. I just started to see a lot of things and I prayed that prayer that we all hate to pray. God, if this person is not for me or if anybody is in my life that's not meant to be in my life, please remove them. And God showed me the signs, like they were just slaps in my face. And I was like, oh my gosh, like utter disrespect. And I, you know, I had got to a point where I was like, you know what? This, this isn't me. I know this is, out of, this is out of my character. You know, this isn't me just because you are a man of God doesn't mean you, you know, you aren't a man first and you, you may be a man of God, but you are a babe in Christ. You are not the man for me, you know, and I begin to um, write in my journal every day about certain things that were going on. And I started to see how crazy the things that I was going through actually looked on paper and it's like sometimes when you're going through things things don't sound crazy until you're talking to your girlfriends and it's like wait a minute the stuff I'm saying on my mouth is yeah this this is crazy this this is actually crazy and I started to just pray day and night I said you know what God I'm over this it happened to me you know I can no longer I can no longer deal with this situation. I've, I've learned my lesson. I think I passed the test with flying colors. You know, if, if you can get me out of this situation, I promise I, I'm leaving it all to you. No matter what they come and say, you know, to me, it's no longer I'm a man of God. Okay. And so was the devil. He was, he was God's favorite at one point. And, you know, I, I had just begun to talk more and more and more and more and more to God about this situation because sometimes we can live in our own will and not God's will because all we need is certain key words. I'm like, okay, we got it from here, God. Thank you so much. You know, I got it from here, God, not knowing that he knows all along. He is all, you know, so that was one of the hardest fights of my life, trying to learn how to unlove someone and, and in the midst of learning how to get away from that situation. I learned how to forgive my father after all these years. Um, he died when I was 15. So he died back in 2002. And I wrote him a letter um, last year, no, 2020, during the pandemic. I wrote a letter and everything I ever wanted to say, I wrote it down and I began to cry because I said, oh my goodness, you know, our favorite line sometimes as women is, I'm okay. It's fine. It's nothing. I'm all right. I'll be good. And if I'm not okay, I will be okay instead of dealing with the situation. So I had so much unlearning to do about myself and I had so much healing that um, I had to do. And it's, you know, when you're healing from something, it hurts. It absolutely hurts because it's like for so long, I could have been dealt with this. I think I, I, I could have dealt with this a long time ago. And I just kept pushing it off and just picking up a hobby or picking up something else. I'm like, I'll deal with this later. I don't have time for this. And I kept just, I kept becoming better in other areas and aspects of my life. So I think, well, I know God was like, no, we're not going to keep, we're not going to keep doing this, brushing nothing up under the rug. We're going to handle, we're going to take this, we're going to handle this, and we're going to deal with this. And in the midst of all of that, I learned that when you, you know, when you learn how to deal with a situation, you begin to heal. 
And I didn't, I didn't realize that dealing with all of those situations, it became like, a, 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 I felt so light. Like it was like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. And I was like, you know what, God, thank you so much. Because for, for three years, I have been praying for a man of God. I've been praying for my soulmate, my one, my Boaz, my person. And I didn't know that that person was under my nose all along. And I was just going through this and thinking that I had to have a list and had to have certain standards. And this person had to be what I wanted. And I didn't look beyond what I wanted. I, I didn't have the focus on God. The focus was on what Tierra wanted. And once I just gave my all to God, so like the doors of blessings, just, it, they just, they, they burst open for me. And I was like, you know what, God, I, I feel like I should have dealt with this a long time ago, you know, but I was so busy dealing with status quo and trying to keep up with the Joneses and so many other things. God was like, I got you. I got you. You know, you're doing your thing right now, little girl, with this little situation. I got you. It's coming. And, but when you come out of this storm, you are going to be such a different, totally complete person. And I, I can say now after coming out of that, I feel so much better. I, I just feel like a heavyweight now. Like I can go through anything with God now. Like I just feel so much better. And it, it, it it's amazing to be in the presence of God because for so long I was chasing after something in the streets. And I thought that a human being could fill the void in my heart. And the only person that could feel it was God. And so I, I am just so much better um, after that. So that's my, that's my storm, coming out of storm. Wow, praise God, praise God. Woo, thank you, sis, for, you dropped so many gems in that. Like, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> that was, you know, and I feel like so many women can relate to that, especially from the um, relationship side of things, you know, mm -hmm. finding your person. As you were talking, I started thinking, I said, you know, we tend to look at storms as a negative thing, right? Mm -hmm. But that's us from our fleshly and worldly perspective. Yes. But when you go to the Bible and when the disciples was on the boat and there was a storm mm -hmm. and they were freaking out, but mm -hmm. where was Jesus? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> sleep. Sleep. I mean, he was sleep. And he was sleep. sleep. <laughs> and if we could start taking the steps to seeing the storm as not as a negative thing, Yes. But seeing it as a preparation thing, mm -hmm. seeing it as a growth thing. Yes. A building. I mean, there's so many, so many different directions we can go through that. Can you speak to how we can start taking those steps? Yes. Stop looking at it like it's a um, fire on a stove and like, oh, if I touch it, oh, I'm gonna get burned. Like, oh my gosh. Like, or if it's like fire coals on the ground and you're like, oh my gosh, if I step on it, I'm going to get hurt. You're not going to get hurt. Storms, they, when they come, it, they are literally like just lessons, lessons that you need in order to develop in your walk with God and in your, in your faith and your belief and, and life in general, you have to, it's like one of those things where you have to, um, you know, in college, when you have to do your dissertation and it's over a hundred something pages, like, and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I prepare for that? Like, you just have to do it. You have to do it. You have to, first of all, you have to get out of your own way. That's what, that's what a lot of the times we don't like to do. We don't like to get out of, get out of our own way. We're, we're so selfish in ourselves, and it's like, you know, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to do that. And I don't feel like I have to. And, but why is it my turn? Like, why do I, 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 it's like, I, 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 and it's like, it's, you know, 
somebody told me a long time ago, it's not even about you. And I used to take that person. I'm like, what do you mean it's not about me? Yes, it is about me. And I was like, why did she say that? Or why did this person say that? And I learned the hard way. It is not about you. It's not about you. Your story and testimony is on the opposite side of the storm. So you have to go through it. God equipped you for, for the storm. God equipped you to fight. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Life is spiritual warfare. And he's equipped us. He has equipped us. And you have to go through that in order to grow. You have to go through a storm or two or three or four. You know, you, you just have to go through it. You just have to, have to, have to go through the storm. And I promise you, you will be a better person after the storm. The person you are, when you go in the storm, you, you will never see that person again. You will never be see that person again. You will never be that person again. You are going to be top tier, sis. You're going to be top tier after the storm. So I tell, go through the storm. I'm telling you, it will save your life. Going through the storm will save your life. Y'all heard it. She said, going through the storm will save your life. And you make a very good point. But there's still some people who, even after a year, two years, have not fully stepped out of the storm. Right? They're not in the middle of it. They're not in the beginning of it. I mean, it's, it's not as bad as it was. You know, it rains sometimes. Sometimes you see a little lightning. You know what I'm saying? And can you speak to how do you know if you fully still have not stepped out of the storm? Because on one side, you feel like you have moved on. Life is, you know, doing well, right? Because some of us don't fully understand the power of God and the blessings. People don't understand the word abundance, right? Because they think things are good. I got money in my bank account. I'm good. Things are good. But they don't know there's more. There is more. So how? what advice do you have to that person who may not even realize that they're still not fully out of the storm? Um, so, for, so for that person that isn't out of the storm, I want you to know it. that means it's still some lesson to learn. It's still something that you aren't fully grasping, grasping, and God wants you to continue. To, so you have to allow the storm to run its course. And again, going, going through the storm will not hurt you. It will not harm you. It will not kill you. That storm is meant to heal you. It will show you so many things about yourself. I mean, the confidence, the self-esteem, like the, that is a complete spike within itself. You, and again, you will not be the person you went in as in the storm. That's not the same person. You will come out so much better and brighter. You'll be wiser. You'll, you, you will be, it, it's, I can't, it's, I can't even explain it. You will be so much better and equipped with the knowledge from God and just understanding life itself and how to handle things and how to deal with things. So if you're not completely out of the storm yet, then that means you haven't um, fully um, learned the lesson. The, the lesson is still being um, taught to you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to ask you my last question before we open it up for Q&A is what do we do after we are out of the storm? Because one thing I know that we're not supposed to do that most people do is be quiet. You know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you come out of the storm, you have 
you have become a mouthpiece and a vessel for God. And again, like I said earlier, you are um, your 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 test and testimony. That's for somebody else. It's not. It's not. It's the things that you go through. Half of them, they aren't even about. They aren't even about you. It's not about you. Sometimes you were just one of God's strongest soldiers. So you had to go through it so you can teach somebody how to get out of it safe, how to get out of it alive, how to get out of it healthy, you know, come out with all 10 toes and all 10 fingers, your health, your just everything. So coming out, when you come out of that storm, you cannot be quiet. You have to help somebody else if it's in the teaching realm or, you know, you're speaking at events about it, or you write a book about it, or you write music about it, or you write a play, whatever it is that you do in whatever lane that you are in, it, whatever capacity that you're in, you have to be vocal about it. You have to be vocal about it because keeping something like that to yourself can harm or damage the next generation. Because a lot of people may think, oh, this person has family and friends. I'm sure they talk to their aunts and their mom and their sisters, or I'm sure they have good, good, good girlfriends. That's not the case. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people don't have that. And you could be the person that saves that person's life. You could be the person that saves their life and change the trajectory of the course of their life. So I, 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 I implore you to be vocal about coming out of the storm. Whatever the storm is, it doesn't have to be the same as mine. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be. You could come out of the storm with anything and your story can change the trajectory of someone else's whole entire life. It may seem small to you, but that can be monumental to someone else. So do not stay quiet. God did not place you in this in that predicament for you to stay quiet and stand still. You have to be vocal. You have to, you have to affirm yourself and you have to make sure that the world hears your story. They know your story. They understand your story. So if something like that comes up in their life, they are equipped with the knowledge and they can step over there like, oh, excuse me. Oh, you're that. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. I got this. Cause I heard my sister say over here, I don't have to go through that. This is what happened. This is how this person came. This is what they said. This is what they did. I got to watch out for that smile. I got to watch out for that compliment. I got to watch out for all of these things. Cause it's not genuine. So I just, again, I implore you all, if you have a testimony, please share it. And I know, like me, you guys been in church when they always ask on a certain Sunday, it's you, it was usually the fourth Sunday for mine. They just had testimony Sunday and it was just like, it was worship and different church members stood up and talked about different testimonies. And now as a grown adult, I can sit here and just give God so much Thanks just for his grace, his mercy, his favor. When I say favor ain't fair, favor ain't fair because it, he, he, he has watched over little old me so many times. He has given me the things I've prayed for. He's given me things that I didn't pray for or ask for. And he's just that good. So I'm telling y'all, don't be quiet. You could save someone else's entire life. Praise God, praise God. Y'all heard her. She said, don't be quiet, right? Um, there's somebody's life that needs to be saved based on your testimony because the word definitely said that we are free, not just by the blood of the lamb, but the words of our testimony. Um, and also there's purpose in the storm, right? There's purpose in the storm and we got to stop looking at storms as a negative thing and looking at storms as an opportunity for God to work in us, for God to work through us, for God to grow us, equip us, prepare us. And so as we 
close this discussion out, do we have anyone who has any questions for the special guest? Anyone who wanna share personal testimony or just pour back, please feel free to either drop, drop the question or comment in the chat or take yourself off of mute. Any questions, comments, or any personal stories? I think everyone is trying to process <laughs> everything that was said tonight. Okay, so they're <laughs> dropping some things in the chat. Was somebody coming off mute? I thought I heard some noise. I definitely okay. thank you for coming to share tonight. You know, I think it really hit home when you were talking about relationships, right? And you see the, the red flags, but we turn them into pink flags. <laughs> I think that we often, you know, do that. It's like, no, that's not really what that is. You know, we just try not to acknowledge and try to just keep going. But yeah, it's so important not to ignore those signs. Yes. Thank you. That's those pink flags. That's a new one for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, it's cute, right? Because yeah. <laughs> we definitely do it. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Because, you know, it's the it's the it's we have that nurture nature in us. So it is definitely a thing like I can I can love that out of him. I can all I got to do is do this and do that. I can talk to him. We, we could probably do therapy together. Like we create a whole um, action plan for a man. For them, this is a game, you know, so I definitely know that we turn a lot of the red flags they have um into pink ones because we're like oh we can just love it out of them and we can do this and he just want to see that all my hard work is you know not in vain and he's going to love me and marry me you know because that's our goal our goal is to get married and we feel like every person every person that comes along is the one we do we believe every man that comes along is the one. So we treat everyone like the one. And then we get our feelings hurt every single time. Every single time. That's very, that is very, very true. And it's just not even with men though. Hmm. It's friendships, it's, it's jobs. Oh, you know, yes. <laughs> it's not even, it's not even, and I feel like we have this thing where we don't even realize it that they won't even know our role though, mm -hmm. because we've been trying to play God's role and, oh. and he's, he won't sit back. He's going to like, go ahead and do what you do. <laughs> but let me tell you, you can't yeah. do what I do. No, absolutely not. He definitely gives us that, that rope to hang ourselves, right? Yes. You know? And he's like, Oh, you back? You okay? All right, come on, come on, come on. It's all right. It's okay. Come on back, little girl. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so I, you know, I, I always say free will is a gift and a curse because yes. <laughs> it is definitely one of those gifts and curses. Like, oh, I got to tread lightly when I do this or when I say mm -hmm. this. I can't say everything and I can't do everything, you know. So yes, this was fun. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for, you know, um, definitely being understanding and patient. From last week when I had my little mishap, God is good. All the time. I did, I did fracture my toe, but I'm I'm gonna be okay. Yes, I'm so glad <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> but I'm gonna be okay. And then with tonight, um, for those who were not on um when we begin. I am stuck in a hall. Um, I have my aunt's, uh, aunt's funeral tomorrow that we were preparing the hall for the repast. And I was walking out to leave to make sure I make it home so I could be in my front of my computer, have all my setup. I uh, found an older gentleman unconscious. So I just had to go into call 911, help, you know. And so I was stuck for a while because cops and fire trucks they were working on him for a while that's continued to I don't know his name um but he was just at the hall um practicing um he plays like instrument I guess with a band at this hall or something but let's just lift him up in prayer 
and pray, you know, that God, you know, whatever his desire is for his life, you know, that God will comfort um, his family, comfort him, you know, if his desire for him to still walk this earth. And I just, I just really thank you for being very understanding um, because everything you said tonight, I know someone needed to hear it, even if they're not hearing it tonight, even if they're listening to the replay, someone needed to hear because we were, we were not even on my phone. You're not able to go live on Facebook. And a lot of people do tend, tend to tend, tune in through Facebook. So a lot of people are going to have to catch the replay. I just want to thank you for your yes, for your faithfulness, for your obedience um, because it's not easy sharing your story, right? It's not easy being vulnerable, right? But we know it's worth it, you know, to, to be able to help someone not go through the same thing that we went through or to help them get out of it sooner. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, the reason why I always share my story is because it hurts. And I don't want nobody to experience that hurt. Like if I can help somebody, I'm going to help them. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I always so keep my hands open. I, yes. I, I'm full of, you know, the knowledge that I have. It's not, well, I don't want to keep it in my hands like this because I'm blocking my own blessings. So I always keep my hands open and free. I'm free to share anything I have when it comes to whatever. I am always willing to share, so... Yes, thank you. Because we definitely will be having you back. And as we yes. got she in that DMV, y'all. So when we start doing our meetups and stuff, you know, she might be popping up. And she also does events. So anytime she's doing something, I will definitely um put it in in the e the in the weekly email so you guys can support her. Cause she about to pick things back up. She has slowed down, but yeah, she she got it. She, got, she about to pick it back up, y'all. She also <laughs> has um, a radio show. So yeah, we also gonna include it in the email that we send out as a follow up. But please go ahead and put your information so they can follow her, y'all. Follow her on all her social media platforms. Check out her radio show, The Queen's Table, that she she does. I mean, she wasn't lying when she said that she was a serial entrepreneur i mean my sister's got lots of things going on she doing the thing she's not wasting no gift okay god bless her with a lot of gifts you know pastor dr darius um daniel says that there are some of us that are uniquely gifted and let me tell you, this sister right here is uniquely gifted. Some people are not meant to just do this or that. Some people are meant to do this and that. So we praise God for you, um, my sister. Thank I really, you. I really praise God for you. And I'm so, I'm so grateful um, for this connection. Yeah. And I just can't wait to see how God continues to work through you. And I'm so happy that I get to witness it. You know, thank you. Thank you so much. For a long time, I never even thought I deserved this. So I, I'm still learning how to accept um, accolades and praises in my flowers. It's, this is unreal to me. I'm the one usually saying, you know, thank you. You're this and you're that. So to hear that, it, it's, it's finally kind of sinking in that I am some, you know, I, I deserve a little bit too. So I, I do say thank you so much. I appreciate it. And of course, um, you guys can, you queens can follow me um, on social media. I, I have too many. I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of handles, but I am Tierra Johnson and my whole name is typed up. If you just um, click your uh, mouse over my name, that is how you spell my name on Facebook. Um, on Instagram, you can follow me at I am underscore T-I-A-R-A -A and the letter J. And on that page, you all my other um, business pages will pop right up and you can please follow me. Please reach out to me and I will definitely respond back to you in a timely fashion. And thank you so much um, for having me again, Marcia. This was fun. Um, I never really share my story. I'm always the one hosting events and talking to other people and running my mouth. Up. <laughs> you know, I ran my mouth about myself tonight. So it was fun. I love this. Thank you so much. Thank you. And as we close out, 
do you have any um, two things? Do you have any final thoughts for the audience? And um, what is your go-to scripture around this topic that the audience can meditate on throughout the week? Oh my gosh, my go-to scripture is Matthew 5, 14. I love it. And let me pull it up, guys. I'm sorry. It's, it's like a, a few words, but I love it. That is my favorite scripture. I look to that um, for everything because... I used to be in a place where, again, I didn't see myself as that person. But when I read Matthew 5.15, I said, I mean, I'm sorry, 5.14. I said, yes, this is for me. And it reads in New King James Version, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. And that spoke to me in so many ways because I said, you know, I always played the back seat in the back row and stuff. And just to see this, the... The Bible is one of my favorite books. It is the best book. It is like the book of all books. And it's so many different scriptures that I can relate to. But when it comes to certain things in life, I always look for Matthew um, chapter five, verse 14. So that is my, that's my favorite scripture. And you said, what was the other part of the question? You said- Your final thoughts. Shine, sis shine no matter what no matter what it is shine shine be your most authentic self never down never downplay yourself so you can be on someone else's level because mm. their level might be lower than than the one that god wants you to be on mm. okay mm. 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 Shine. Did y'all, y'all better shine <laughs> wow because their level may be lower than the level that God has predestined for you to be on. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Mm. Yes. Okay, ladies. So remember that we're here every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Same Zoom link, just a different topic. So please come back and join us. Please share with a friend. Remember, don't be selfish. Like you never know what someone needs, Mm -hmm. right? You never know someone can come on here and just be delivered. Like you don't know what people are going through. You know, we wear a lot of mini masks and someone could just be going through something that you don't know about and they can jump on here and hear someone else's testimony and be able to start walking out of the storm because we're not trying to stay in the storm. We're trying to walk out of the storm. So ladies, please remember every Thursday, 8.30 Eastern time, we're here. If you ever miss a Thursday, you can always catch the replay on uh, our YouTube. If you have any prayer requests, I have received some prayer requests um, in in private chat. So if you have any prayer requests, if you don't want to send it to the whole group, you can send it to me privately. So in my private prayer time, I can continue to stand in agreement with you. See, the thing is, I'm going to pray. I'm not just going to pray for you. I'm going to pray with you because there are power that one, two, one, two, one, two or more. Right. So remember that whenever someone comes to you and say, please pray for me, say, sure, I will pray with you right? We're going to go to, we're going to petition to God together. We're going to go to him, right? We're going to start speaking and thinking and thanking him in advance. So ladies, please go ahead and drop your prayer request in the chat. And if you ever have any prayer requests throughout the week, please feel free to send it in an email. The team will be putting all that information in the chat. And we also have um, a group chat that we're growing on WhatsApp, um, just creating a space where if you ever need prayer or motivation during the week, um, you can just jump into the chat, put it in the chat and just allow another sister to pour life into you. Because remember when you don't share, you miss the opportunity for someone to be able to shine his light and pour his and pour uh, life into you. So let's see, let's go ahead and um, go to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you this evening in the name of Jesus, just thanking you, oh God, thanking you for today, Father God. Father God, 
I just I just can't thank you enough. Even if I try, I can't thank you enough because you've been so good, Father God. Father God, because some people didn't even make it to this minute. Some people didn't even make it to this hour. Some people didn't even make it to this day, Father. But Father God, you continue to breathe air into our lungs, Father God. You continue to allow our heart to beat, Father. So, Father God, we just thank you. We just thank you, Father God. With so much going on in the world, Father God, we, we continue to thank you despite what we see, despite what we're going through, Father God. We just continue to thank you, Father God. Father God, help us to not focus on what's in front of us, Father God. Help us to remember that what we see in the natural is nothing compared to what you are doing, Father God, because we know that you are supernatural. Father God, we know that things happen in the spiritual realm before it actually happened in the natural, Father. So we just want to praise you and thank you, Father God. Father God, we want to ask that you forgive us for our sins, Jesus. And Father God, if we have any unforgiveness in our heart, Father God, we want to ask you to help us work through it, Jesus. Father God, help us let it go. Help us to forgive that person. Help us to forgive ourselves, Father. Father God, please help us in our unbelief, Father. Father God, please show us the areas, Father God, that we're not representing you well, Father God, the areas that we're not representing ourselves well. Father God, please help us to be able to show us the areas that we need to develop ourselves, Father God, the areas that we are truly um, struggling with our identity, Father. Just like Tierra said that, you know, we can't focus on another person, Father God. Father God, we can't, we can't look at their level, Father God. We can't get stuck on where they're at because what you have for us may be, may be greater, may be more powerful, Father God, may be bigger. Father God, please help us to mind our own business and stay in our own lane, Jesus. Father God, Father God, please allow us to, to gracefully, peacefully be able to walk through the storms, Father God, knowing that you are there with us. Father God, help us to have the faith that you will see us through, Father God, that you would do what your word says, for your word says you will never leave or forsake us. Your word says that you would give us a crown of beauty for our ashes, that you would turn our, our, our despair into hope, Father God, that you would turn our mourning into joyous praise, God. So Father God, you said that you came to give us hope in the future, that you came to give us life abundantly, God. So Father God, we just praise you, Father God. Father God, help us to be able to step into everything that you have predestined for us, Father. Help us to be able to realize what our spiritual gifts are, Father God, and to be able to acquire and improve the skills that we need, Father God, to be able to walk in our calling, Father God. So Father God, I just thank you for everyone on this call, Father God. I lift their prayer requests up to you, the said and the unsaid request God. Father God, I want to send a special prayer up to our special guest, Sierra, Father God. Father God, I pray that you continue to cover her, Father God, that your hedge of protection, Father God, that you encamp your angels around her house, Father God. Father God, around her family, around her finances, around her health, around her business, Father God. Father God, she continue to go forth into the world, Father God, that you will protect her, Father God, that you always will provide her the exit door, Father God, that no hurt, harm, or danger, Father God will sustain her father father god that you would give her the strength that she needs father god that you will send her the people father who would not make her dim her light father god father god father god who would not let her settle father god the people who will continue to allow her to see you in her to continue to allow her to see who you created her to be, Father. Father God, we praise you in advance for the doors that you have already opened for her that she has yet to walk through, Father God. We praise you for, for the seat at the table that you have already prepared for her, Jesus. Father God, Father God, we just thank you for today and we just thank you for tomorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, see you next week. Remember that God loves you and so do I. Bye. Have a blessed night.